So I have a huge win in Rave Dubin's battle of ideas here. Uh, you're going to hear him talk about this nonstop. Because, you know, all he cares about is the issue of free speech. It's his primary issue. So take a look at what just happened. This is from Splinter News. They say, in 2017, Texas became one of more than two dozen states to pass a law or have taken some sort of executive action explicitly targeting the pro-Palestinian boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement. The Texas statute barred the state from doing business with companies involved in the movement. The free speech concerns here are rather obvious. And on Thursday night, a federal judge ruled against the law. U.S. District Judge for the Western District of Texas, Robert Pittman, an appointee of Barack Obama, delivered an injunction to the Texas law on, uh, to the Texas law on Thursday night. The lead plaintiff, Bahia Amawi, we've covered her story before, is an Austrian-born American citizen and speech pathologist with family members in Palestine. Due to her support of BDS, Amawi had refused to sign a contract with a local school district for whom she had worked for nearly a decade, which explicitly said she wouldn't boycott Israel, and thus was forced to end her relationship with the school district. In his opinion, Pittman directly took on the fact that just five lawmakers in the entire Texas legislature voted against the bill. Quote, Texas touts these numbers as the statute's strength, Pittman wrote, in finding uh, that the law violates the First Amendment. Quote, they are, rather, its weakness. Later, he wrote that the statute threatens to suppress unpopular ideas and manipulate the public debate through coercion rather than persuasion. This, this the First Amendment does not allow. This is the third time that the federal courts have struck down anti-BDS laws. In January 2018, a federal judge temporarily blocked a similar law in Kansas, after which the state amended the law. Last September, another federal court followed with a ruling against an anti-BDS law in Arizona, Arizona Governor Doug Ducey signed an, um, an amended law last week. So now, this has repeatedly been slapped down in federal courts. Why? Because it's obvious, as I've stated in the segments that we've done about this, this is an open and shut case. I mean, you're going you're gonna to come to me with a case of the government is now nullifying all contracts with anybody who supports... Boycott, divestment, and sanctions of Israel. So if you support that, we are going to punish that political speech and say the government will, under no circumstances, do business with you. Well, what the fuck do you think that is? That's the definition of targeting political speech. That is like the heart of what the First Amendment is there to protect. It's there to protect pro political speech. So where's the question? There is no question, and every court so far has ruled that. But what I found fascinating was the wording in this. Because the wording in this was, the statute threatens to suppress unpopular ideas. Quite literally, this is by law threatening to do that. And manipulate the public debate through coercion rather than persuasion. So in other words, I'm not going to explain to you why it's illogical and irrational for you to support BDS. I'm going to use the power of the state to censor you. Wow, this is almost exactly what Rave Dubin has been saying he cares most about since he started his show, The Rubin Report. Has he said anything about this topic? Oh, that's right, he didn't. No, oh, that's so weird. Not oh, so strange. It's almost like he's not principled and he only trots this out to bolster his side of the argument. Rave Dubin is a massive, massive, massive defender of Israel. And so... When it's an issue where we're talking about pro-Palestine free speech, even though it is a literal First Amendment case. So in other words, this is not just like an ancillary issue where it's only the principle of free speech that's in question. This is like, no, the legality of it. The actual First Amendment and a court proceeding where the government is trying to censor speech. And where is he? Shh. only trots out those free speech arguments when it's to bolster his side. It's not principled. That's why he'll, ne why he'll never defend things he doesn't agree with. And now you see it. You had to come to this show, a left-wing political show, to hear about the actual threats to free speech in this country. Don't forget that. Because right-wingers, they like to cloak themselves in the issue of freedom of speech, but they don't actually fundamentally support it in material ways. Have you heard, how many times have you heard right-wingers come out against Donald Trump for saying 
we should open up the libel laws to sue the media. Candace Owens, just the other week on Twitter, was responding to Donald Trump Jr., who didn't like an article about him. And Candace Owens says, this is crazy. Trump does need to open up the libel laws. What? The same people who screamed about free speech on Monday, on Tuesday, they're like, yeah, cannot wait to censor my political opponents. They're hypocrites, guys. They're frauds. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They don't care. They're playing for a team. That's what they're doing. But I'm here to tell you the actual state of free speech in America. And thankfully, because of our wonderful First, first Amendment, they're actually... Courts are actually protecting vulnerable communities who are expressing opinions that are going against the powerful.